मैम वी आर लाइव नाउ मैम यू मे स्टार्ट नाउ uh okay can you guys see me as well okay so uh do we have madiha here madi are you with us yeah i'm here can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you i can hear you well thank you okay. so much for joining us and uh to be here with us and okay so we are just going to start in a while but before we start i'm just going to introduce myself to you i am dr durish abbas one of the lab mentors from med institutes and we'll be discussing a little bit about of counseling and pediatrics we'll just give you a taste of how the real exam looks like and how the real exam um you know how you can actually manifest your clinical skills and knowledge in the real exam right so we'll be discussing these counseling and pediatrics and just a little bit about med institutes for the ones who do not know so med institutes is actually a trusted e learning platform and covering doctors globally at med institutes we go beyond conventional study materials our platform is your one stop destination for personalized assistance and insights tailored to your exam journey so whether you're preparing for plat or you're preparing for any other post graduate exam like mrc og mrc em mrc pch or other pg exams we are here to committed and we are here for you to empower you with the knowledge and the right skills that you really need for success right so it's a golden opportunity to refine your skills and boost your confidence in a realistic exam setting and you're feel free to join us all and so right now before we start the session and before we start the actual mock i want to talk to the listeners again that please listen very carefully dr saad and the other is um, other participants as well and you guys have to give feedback at the end okay first you guys will give feedback and then i will add on that feedback and every feedback will be very valuable for the doctors who will present today in front of us and they're having their exams in few days okay so their time is money for them and for us as well okay so let's just start um have you set the timer back end team i'm talking to the back end team right now guys and uh, ma'am we are waiting for your call perfect okay uh dr madiha can you uh, so guys it will be a telephonic consultation so there's i'm going to discuss two scenarios today one from counseling and one from pediatrics so counseling session will be a telephonic consultation today and the pediatric consultation will be a video call consultation today so uh dr madiha can you see this scenario dr madi can you see the scenario on the screen um no i just see the first page still now the scenario you are in fy2 in gp surgery no it's just your... the first No, it's just the first slide still about med and students. Okay. Now, can you see? Me no, we do I? Okay. So uh can someone from the back end team control these slides? Uh ma'am give us 5 minutes. Okay Madi can you see now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when is the okay. timer going to start? Whenever you're ready. Do let us know.
Okay, I'm good. Okay. Um, start the timer, please. Wait a minute, ma'am. Okay. Okay, start. Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Malik, one of the junior doctors. Um, am I speaking to Mr. Smith? Yes, I'm Daniel. All right, um, and uh, so can you please uh, confirm your full, um, your age, please? Yeah, so I'm 24 years of age. Mm -hmm. All right, Daniel, um, so I'm calling from the GP surgery that you visited. Um, is this a good time to talk right now? Yes, perfect, doctor. Yeah, but doctor, doctor, I'm, I'm really worried, you know, because I was waiting for my blood mm -hmm. test reports and I was informed that you're going to talk to me regarding my reports. Can you please tell me about my test results? Okay, uh, okay, Jim, uh, Daniel, that's exactly what I'm calling you about. But first, um, can you hear me properly? Yeah, 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 I can hear you properly. Okay, okay. And can you also please confirm your first line of address for me before we start? Yeah, doctor, it's XYZ Hartman Square. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, and also, would I be able to connect with you on the same line if this gets disconnected? Yeah, yeah, doctor, yeah, for sure, yes. All right, sounds good. Um, okay, so I understand that you're here for the test results, and uh, you're expecting this call about that. Um, but before I get into your results, uh, would it be okay if I just have a quick chat with you about um, your the symptoms or any uh, the condition or the reason why you had the test in the first place? Uh, yeah, doctor. Actually, the reason why I had this test was, you know, my brother, he got mm -hmm. diagnosed with this condition, what you call, uh, it's like sickle cell anemia. And right. I've, I've read it in the internet and it says that it's a deadly disease. Oh my God, I'm so much scared about it. Doctor, do I have the same disease? Please, can you tell me? Uh, Daniel, I understand your concerns, and I'm so sorry to hear that you were so impacted by your brother's diagnosis. How's your brother doing now? Oh, um, I don't really care about my brother. He's not, he's not even living with me right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, he's fine. He's fine. But I'm just mm -hmm. bothered about myself. Can you please tell me right. about my, my, my test results, please? Sure, of course. I'll get it. Get into that in just a minute. Um, but before, can you please tell me if you uh, have any other family members who have the similar diagnosis? Oh, no, doctor, no. Actually, okay, it and was a big surprise for all of us, and we never knew that this was going to happen. No, none of us has got tested before. Right, so it's the first incidence in your family if someone get diagnosed yeah. with sickle cell. Yeah. Okay. Um, and have you yourself have had any symptoms for this disorder, like... Any symptoms at all? Oh, no, doctor. Like, what What are you looking for? So, for example, um, sometimes people with this disease can get frequent pain attacks in, the, in their different parts of the body. Um, they can have different infections uh, or generally just feel symptoms of anemia, such as tiredness, weakness. Have you ever had any of those? Oh, no, doctor. Never. Mm -hmm. um, and are you just fit and healthy in general, or do you have any other disorders that anything you've been diagnosed with ever? Oh, no, doctor, never. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you take any meds, any medications for anything? Oh, no, doctor. Okay. Um, and um, all right. Um, so basically, um, after your brother's diagnosis, have you found out more about this disorder or any information that you've had? Like, what's your um, idea about it? I don't know anything. I just know one thing, that it's a deadly disease, doctor. And uh, one mm -hmm. thing I wanted to tell you that... I don't know, for some reason, I'm not able to sleep these days. I mean, it's mm -hmm. been four weeks now, and it's really affecting my work. It's affecting my my studying. Mm -hmm. I'm not and able so to this, concentrate. Right. And so this sleep disturbance started ever since your brother's diagnosis? Yeah. So I can see that that must have had a huge impact on you like that. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so now coming to your test results, should we discuss them? Yeah, okay. sure, sure. All right, um, so basically, um, I'm happy to assure you that um, you do not have the sickle cell disease itself. All right, your mm -hmm. test results show that you don't have the same disorder. However, mm -hmm. um, your test results do indicate that you are carrying one of the genes for this mm -hmm. disease. 
Um, mm -hmm. So before we get into it, let me just explain it to you what that means. Yeah. So the disease basically manifests in two ways. Some people can just be carriers, whereas other people can actually get the disease. Does that make sense? Oh, doctor, that, 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 does that mean that I'm carrying the disease? I'm not right, having the disease, it. but I'm carrying it? Yes. Um, so let me elaborate more on that. Um, okay. So basically, we have two genes, and these genes detect uh, the shape of our blood cells. Right. Um, and in sickle cell disease, like in your brother's case, what happens is that you get two genes for the disease uh -huh. and they end up manifesting okay. in form of this disease. Whereas in some people, some people can get one gene of the disease, but one normal healthy gene. And these people end up being carriers. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, doctor. That, 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 that really makes sense. Well, thank you so much for such an explanation. I so uh, so you really mean that I do not have the disease, right? Right. So that's what I'm saying. You don't have the disease like your brother because he has two unhealthy or the disease carrying genes, but you have one normal and one healthy gene, which means that you are carrying it, but you will not have the disease. You do not have the disease, and you will not get the symptoms of it. Oh God! Thank you so much, doctor. That was such a relief. And how how is it going to impact my general life? Um, right, so basically you will not have any symptoms. Um, sometimes what happens is that some carriers can get mild anemia, but none of that is very serious or doesn't warrant any, any further investigation or, or treatment, really. Um, Doctor, there what is, is anemia? What is anemia? I, I've heard it about something about it, but I don't know what is it. Right, so basically sickle cell disease is also known as sickle cell anemia because it's a form of anemia. And what we call anemia is that it's an issue with the blood cells. So this is basically an issue in which the shape of your blood cells is abnormal. And so your blood cells don't live as long. And that's basically what the disease is called sickle cell anemia. Um, so at worst, you will just um, experience some um, anemic symptoms. Um, and at best, you won't have any at all. Um, you could, however, have one situation in which you might be able to transmit um, this gene that you have. Uh, however, um, normally, uh, if, if your partner is normally healthy, you will not be transmitting it to the kids. Um, but if you ever have any symptoms and if you ever experience any worsening, um, um, tiredness or any symptoms like that, please do let us know. Um, and um, was there any other uh, expectation that you had from this consultation today? Yeah, doctor, can you please tell me regarding my sleep? I'm not able to sleep. Right. Um, so basically, what I okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Doctor Medi. It was a wonderful <laughs> performance. It was a wonderful performance, and honestly speaking, uh, the best thing that I liked about your first of all, I'll talk about all the positive things, right? So mm -hmm. the best thing in your consultation was that this is the way that we should do, right? So you are, first of all, because you know that the patient is already very anxious, right? He's already panicking. He's not able to sleep for like three weeks and it's impacting his life. So how to deal with such kind of scenario is to, first of all, give the positive, like, you know, positive news to give the good news first. And then in a slider way, you give the bad news, right? Like, okay, you're, you're not having a disease, but you do, you know, you, you are a carrier, but you're not having a disease, right? So this was a good way of explanation. Okay. But before I explain it more, I would like uh, all the participants to please uh, one by one unmute themselves and please uh, give a feedback, your very important feedback to uh, Dr. Maddie. Hello. Yeah. Well done, Dr. Madi. Um, it was a very nice presentation. Firstly, you were quite polite. And also at the beginning of the presentation, um, the way you sp spoke to the patient, it was quite anxious at the beginning and you were able to calm him down and tell him, okay, you're going to get to the results. Well, you want to ask some questions first, which is very good. And also, you were when he spoke about his brother, 
you acknowledge it and you were like, oh, I'm sorry about your brother. And then um, it's very good IPS. Everything he was saying, you were acknowledging it and you had a way of not just ignoring the patient, but trying to say, yes, I understand, but I would like to ask you some questions first. So it's just about communicating well and also taking note of everything the patient was saying and also when it was time to break the news about the results the way you went with it and also the explanation you were not using very big terminologies and even when you said anemia the patient was like okay i didn't understand that you were also able to to pass your message across so i'll just say you should just continue doing this is very good actually with this performance i believe even in the exam you will do well just continue practicing and just doing this well done thank you okay that was a very good feedback thank you so much adiola anyone else It just shows how uh, good listeners you are because there's one mark for listening as well. So if you want to perform well in exam, you have to be very good listeners as well. Okay. So anyone else from the team? Dr. Dure, why not take feedback from uh, Dr. Saad? Yeah, Dr. Saad, are you there with us? Yes, I am with you. Perfect. Can you give uh, us your valuable feedback? Uh, I think she, uh, the way she handled the patient is exceptional. Uh, but uh, I would say that she should, uh, uh, you know, this patient has raised concern regarding the sleep. So she should address uh, the sleep while doing the management at first place because it has affected the life of the patient. And secondly, yeah. uh, because she did a great job while talking to the patient, but but when was she told that my brother is having these things, so she can ask, what are the symptoms your brother is having? And then the symptoms she told, okay, what are the treatments she is, uh, he is getting? And then she can say, uh, do you have these symptoms? The patient will say, no, I do, because he's a carrier. So she's a car uh, carrier, so she will say, no, 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 I don't have any symptoms, doctor. So then do one or two questions about the red flags and then come to the rest of everything was fine. Perfect, perfect. So, anyone else wants to add? Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering in this uh, scenario, is it possible for uh, to explain to the patient with a pen and uh, paper to so draw like uh, some genes and explain or is not necessary? Because may, may Merely explain to the patient, she might not get the patient might not get it as much as explain on a paper. So would that be all right to do in this uh, station? Well, that's a good question, but actually, um, uh, you know what? That's uh, what I all all always tell my students that not to give a big big explanations, right? We have to be very concise because you you uh, you can see how well she was managing with time, right? But she was not able to safety net in the end, and she was not able to address the concern of the patient very well. Uh, regardless of the fact that she was able to talk in a very swift way and a very like uh, I mean flawless manner, right? But uh, here we have to be very smart with the time. We cannot afford giving long, long explanation of just one thing. And, uh, you know, then we'll be sacrificing the rest of part of the management. Because I have seen people doing that and they take literally two minutes in just explaining the diagnosis. Thank you so much for bringing that concern because that was very important question to ask. Thank you so much, Dr. Aziza. Uh, because there is a misconception of this thing as well. Sometimes people say that, okay, uh, the definition should be like a teaching station. You should explain the patient like, a, you know, it's a teaching station. No, you have to give a, a very concise explanation that they should be able to understand in one go. And believe me, if your IPS is good, they won't uh, like they, they, they'll say, okay, that's good to go.
Okay. They will right. be able to All understand. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And I will explain uh, everything in detail uh, later. Anyone else who can please come up with a question or a feedback, valuable feedback. Uh, doctor, this is. Uh, can I just ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, Maddie, Maddie did a great job uh, with the IPS and everything. So I just want to know because she did not address the concern of the patient. When should she have asked the question about? I mean, you know, addressed it. I mean, we usually go keep it keep it for the end, right? And then we might lose time. Is there any other uh, order that we can ask the questions in there so that we can you know address the uh, concern in the beginning? uh well that's totally up to you but uh, because people mm -hmm. uh, they what they do is that they follow their own patterns like there's mm -hmm. one pattern that we call like you know addressing the concerns right in the beginning but i would not suggest that okay it will just okay. mess up the whole station i always suggest to first of all finish the history and mm -hmm. then explain the management and then address concerns right and you'll be able to uh, have enough time to address the concerns but if you start addressing the concerns right in the beginning you will i think you'll end up missing the station that's what that's totally my belief but people they actually do it they um, you know start with presenting complaint and then uh, without uh, uh, you know before they go to history of presenting illness they ask a question like do you have any concerns any particular concern that you have and then they tell them that concern and they can address it in a shorter way or they can say okay we'll be addressing in the end and even if they say this uh, it is actually recorded in the examiner sheet that they've addressed it oh okay thank you so much doctor yeah got so it's actually quite tricky so you have actually uh, in this exam is about time management it's all about time management right so i'll talk about that as well in the end anyone else with the feedback um no one no one is there i think we're done with the feedbacks or should we have i mean do we have something on the chat box let me see uh okay perfect okay so now i'm going to uh talk about the whole station okay Ma maddie are you with us are you listening yeah i'm here okay perfect so uh it was um uh, everyone is actually praising your consultation and it was a, an exceptional consultation overall but let me tell you where you can improve right because we're not here to i mean we have to motivate each other to participate as well and it was a very good but you need to know where you were lacking right so mm -hmm. um okay so first of all uh, the history could be like uh, when i said that okay like what like when you were collecting the data first of all let's start from the beginning it was a wonderful beginning like you asked all the questions that we are supposed to ask in a telephonic consultation believe me guys i've been taking mocks since like lo a long time and people they do not have this idea of the importance of the telephonic consultation questions or video call consultation questions they simply forget asking about the address of the patient okay like can you please confirm the first line of address for me can you hear me clearly or if it's a video call consultation then there's like a four or five set of question that you need to ask before asking the history before addressing the concerns before anything that you want to do in that station because if you do not know how to uh, like approach the patient on a particular scenario like if it's a video call consultation there's a particular approach towards video call consultation if it's a teaching scenario there's a particular approach towards teaching scenario if it's a breaking bad there's a particular approach for that they're actually looking how much well oriented you are in your time place person okay if you're not going to ask the uh, video call questions in the beginning uh, telephonic questions in the beginning that she uh, did really well i must appreciate you 
but i've seen a lot of candidates missing these questions because in their head they think that okay maybe this is not that much important but believe these questions are very important even more important than your uh, i mean the other differentials uh, uh, you know the other management parts because i've lost my stations in my first attempt i couldn't pass my exam and i'm proud to say that because i can share you my experience okay what happened with me because nobody told me these things right so these questions they are very important like can you hear me clearly can you see me clearly is it the right time to talk to you can i call you back on the same number if this call disconnects if it's a video call consultation can i call you back on the same link if this video disconnects by any chance okay so um Can you please confirm your first line of address for me? Name and age of the patient, and then you're allowed to ask the other questions. Number one, and the okay. So the other question, you have to be very quick in the history taking. You don't you don't have time there to think what you will ask. So it's like literally a mind game. You have to be very quick in asking the questions. So she was very quick in the history, but um, when I asked, like okay, like what you're going to ask, so she. you know you jumbled up with the lore of symptoms okay so the patient present in this way could be you know you can have tiredness you can have this 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 that was too much to say that's totally my perspective maybe some examiner would like it and they do but some uh, uh, Say that 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 was too much for the patient to. Patient says, "Okay, like what?" And they'll say, "No, no, 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 no." And believe me, is no dizziness. No, they'll be quick in answering. So do not worry about that. But sometimes they're actually testing your nerves as well. They're playing around with your nerves by you know some delay tactics. They'll talk slow, but then that's scripted and they're assessing you on that part, right? So they'll. believe me then also judge you on your overall performance and not one tiny thing so that's also one thing to do so yeah we can talk about shortness of breath dizziness chest pain fever weight loss body aches and pains joint pain okay we can we should not go into a lot of detail asking these questions she missed allergies as well okay so but that's fine i mean but uh, you know you have to ask these questions they are important so i uh, try not to miss asking allergies because for them allergies is a very important thing that a doctor should rule out before you know consulting i mean moving into the management part right so uh, you have like be quick in it like shortness of breath dizziness chest pain fever so only the symptoms regarding the sickle cell anemia and then you can you know talk about the parents she did ask about the parents okay and sleep history believe me here uh, we don't have that much time but just one or two questions regarding sleep to rule out the other differentials okay like um uh, at what time do you go to sleep okay um, is your sleep environment comfortable that's it like only one or two questions just to make sure uh, just to let the examiner know that okay she is ruling out the other differentials for insomnia as well because this was this is a very challenging scenario and it's um, a high yield case and it's actually coming in your real exams so it is a challenging scenario because it is not only a follow up case but it's a case with the patient who is coming with insomnia as well memory are you with me right yeah yeah so it was a challenging scenario in a way that uh, it's not only a follow up uh, scenario where you have to explain the blood test results but it was a scenario with insomnia as well so but of course you do not have to go into a de detail of insomnia because there's like hundreds of question to rule out the insomnia differentials and blah blah but just one or two question just to let the examiner know that you're ruling out the other differentials as well okay and then after that quickly pass medical history and you didn't had time of course of uh, smoking and alcohol but uh, whenever you're uh, moving from one part of the history to the other part of the history always and always sign post it shows how well structured you are uh, and it shows how well oriented you are 
okay and showing your structure is also very important to the examiner so you have to sign post when you're moving from past medical to lifestyle and in lifestyle you just need to ask about smoking alcohol okay uh, there's one very important thing that i'm going to tell all of you who are listening to this smoking and alcohol is very important and there is no excuse for not asking about regarding smoking alcohol regardless of the case smoking alcohol is important okay so it's always better to ask smoking alcohol because you never know the examiner has one mark for smoking and alcohol and maybe they have smoking and alcohol history hidden so uh, there is no uh, excuse for not asking smoking and alcohol so smoking alcohol you will ask so the whole idea is to be bit fast and be you know uh, you have to ask only the relevant question because there are hundreds of questions you can ask but you have to be relevant okay after that um, yes so uh, he was also having anxiety panic disorder but okay you know you not need to rule out because you have this diagnosis already in your mind that he is anxious because of his brother's diagnosis that's the reason why she asked idea so idea is very very important it will help you in making a diagnosis it actually helped me in my real exam in understanding what the patient is actually having and they actually help you when you ask uh have you had any thoughts in your mind what might be going on at all or do you have any idea what's going on they will tell you that um they will not bluff they will exactly tell you what's going on so it actually helps you in your exam asking regarding this idea okay so regarding the management yes everyone has given a very good feedback but the management was that you were not able to address sleep uh, issue because here of course we do not have that much of time that we tell all the do's and don'ts of insomnia and in the real exam we really do not have time uh, to tell all the general tips regarding a specific scenario scenario so what we should do is that when you know that you have just one minute okay one thing more that this timer was for 7 minutes it was not for 8 minutes so in the real exam you will have 7 minutes and 30 seconds in actual so you'll have 30 seconds more so you will be able to cover lot more details and if you practice very well there's one more thing with some people and it happened with me as well that you finish before time that's also a red flag even if you finish before time do not stop talking you have to uh, try not to uh, like let the silence hit the station okay not let the silence hit the station like you have to talk 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 right engage the patient but do not um, make it sound like a verbal diarrhea okay so that's one thing thank you so much dr mary now a bit about uh, the scenario just a second uh where is the presentation uh dr dumre we yeah. have a few more new participants so you can ask them if they want to participate okay but actually we have one participant they can be listeners for today because uh, we have one participant dr saad with us and he has exam in few days so we have committed with him already <laughs> dr saad oh, yes. are you with us that's right yes i am yeah so we can we can uh, you know uh, be not fair with the students who have already committed okay so just a few more uh, things about sickle cell disease sickle cell disease is actually the name for a group of inherited health conditions that affect the red blood cells the most serious type is called sickle cell anemia sickle cell disease is particularly common in people with an african or caribbean family background Okay, so people with sickle cell disease produce unusually shaped red blood cells. Dr. Madi did told us about this. Okay, that can cause problems because they do not live as long as healthy blood cells and can block blood vessels. So these slides they prepared from NHS guidelines. Okay, so do follow the NHS whenever you have any problem in any part of uh, you know your theory or any topic, go to NHS website. okay directly do not use like notes here and there just see nhs 
and they will give you the simplest explanation that you can actually use in your real exam people with sickle cell disease produce unusually shaped red blood cells how see how simple it is that can cause problems because they do not live as long as healthy blood cells and can block blood vessels so sickle cell disease is a serious and lifelong health condition all the treatment can help manage many of the symptoms so it can cause a wide variety of symptoms that you can actually ask in the history to rule out uh, if they're actually having these symptoms or not so painful episodes like body aches and pains any joint pains any headache okay and getting infection they're more prone of infection like pneumonia meningitis or respiratory tract infections they can also have acute chest syndrome and anemia so uh, yeah ma'am we have a question in the chat box okay so i'll answer those questions in the end let me uh, finish this sickle cell disease okay show sure, me yeah so sickle cell disease can also sometimes cause a wide uh, range of other problems and these include delayed growth during childhood and delayed puberty and then gall stones which can cause tummy abdominal pain yellowish discoloration of the skins and eyes like jaundice bone and joint pain persistent and painful erection of the penis okay so yeah but that would be too much if you will ask this in the real exam but this is just to let you know that this can happen so actually patient can present with erectile dysfunction having this problem so it's important for you to know that this can happen because actually it will affect the blood flow so it can affect wide variety of symptoms it can give you wide variety of symptoms okay so which can sometimes last several hours and they, they can have leg ulcers they can have strokes they can have tia myocardial infarction they can have serious lung condition like acute chest syndrome which can cause fever cough chest pain breathing difficulties swelling of the spleen like shortness of breath rapid heart beat tummy pain swollen tummy they can have anemia and they can have eyesight problems as well because of clots in the eyes as well so like in diabetes consultation in heart uh, you know in high, high blood pressure consultation we tell na that these clots they can either travel to your large blood vessels they can travel to your small blood vessels so you have to be prepared you can uh, you can uh, do not be scripted or do not uh, limit your mind like okay so um i've i've read about this case only carrier will come no sickle cell disease can also come in your actual exam so you should be able to know how to counsel that sickle cell disease patient that okay so you can have problems in your small blood vessels you can have problems in your large blood vessels small blood vessels will affect your eyes will affect your nerves and large blood vessels can have problem with your heart brain or kidneys okay so high blood pressure in the blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to the lungs okay and pulmonary hypertension kidney or urinary problems including blood in the urine and bedwetting so how sickle cell disease is inherited this was important and this is actually it's very tricky to actually make them understand this thing and you cannot take a lot of time so you have to be very simple with explanation so that's the simplest explanation that's written here that uh, genes act, genes actually comes in pair you inherit one set from your mother and one set from your father to be born with sickle cell disease a child has to inherit a copy of the sickle cell gene from both the parents this usually happens when both parents are carriers of the sickle cell gene also known as having sickle cell trait this this was the case of sickle cell trait so or it can happen when one parent has sickle cell disease and the other is a carrier of it okay so sickle cell carriers do not do not uh, have sickle cell disease themselves but there's a chance they could have a child with sickle cell disease if their partner is also a carrier so here i would uh, again um, say that madi did a very good job by saying the positive thing first because i see many candidates what they do is that okay you can have a child um, with sickle cell disease i mean you're shocking the patient by saying this that you can have a child with sickle cell disease you can't break the bad news in this way right just say okay you can you know whenever uh, uh, you're you're getting married whenever you're planning to get married it's always advised to 
test your partner as well enough because you know there's a chance of inheritance there's a chance of passing these genes so it's always advised to test your partner as well before you get married that's it you don't have to get into a lot of details otherwise you'll just get in trouble but there's a chance uh, they could have a child with sickle cell if their partner is also a carrier so both uh, and they might ask okay doctor what is the chance you know of my child having this sickle cell disease then you can say that there's one in four uh, chance that they uh, they will okay so there's one in two chance like 25% of a chance to be a carrier 25% of a chance to be a diseased person okay and then there's 75% of chance that they will not inherit any sickle cell genes and will not have sickle cell disease as well always show the brighter side of the picture first to calm the patient down even in your actual practice so having children if you carry the sickle cell trait you're at risk of having children with sickle cell disease although this can only happen if your partner is also a carrier or has sickle cell disease themselves but if you're planning to have a child and you know you're a carrier it's a good idea for your partner to be tested as i've mentioned right so it's always uh, you have to tell this in the management as well that if you're planning to have a child it's always better and it's advised to get your partner tested and if you can just ask in the history about the partner if they say that their partner is also a carrier or something like that then you have to refer them for genetic counseling okay if both of you are carriers and you're planning to have a baby talk to your gp about getting a referral to a genetic counselor who can explain the risks to your children and what your options are and uh, these include having tests during pregnancy to see if your baby will have sickle cell disease okay uh, so this is for the scenario that now they they're married they're married okay and both of them are carriers and now they're worried they're having a child the woman is pregnant and they're worried about their baby what to do now so we have solution for that as well do not worry what we can do for you is that we can arrange some tests during pregnancy to see actually if your baby will have sickle cell disease or not this is the best idea best solution to give and then you can you know either you can adopt a child okay or you can try ivf with a donor egg or sperm try a pre implantation genetic diagnosis okay but this is i don't think it's offered by nhs but you can uh, reach a kit from ck guidelines so pre implantation genetic diagnosis can also be done uh, and it's like a pre implantation genetic diagnosis so it will actually show that your child will have this or not because there's only 25% of chance to have and 75% of not to have so there's more chance not to have so if they're not going to have it you can you know carry on with the pregnancy so yeah so there was insomnia as well in this case so the patient was having sleep problem it was and she Uh, okay so this is one thing very important that if you will build a very good rapport with the patient they will help you and in some cases if you are not able to build a very good rapport with the patient they might not help you and in that case you have to ask in each and every case regardless of the scenario you have to ask effect of symptoms impact on their general health okay and they'll tell you that oh doctor it's affecting my life terribly you know i can go to work and this is a red flag for them then you have to do something for them okay you have to give them a one line solution for that so uh, this patient as well he told mr daniel smith he told that you know oh my god doctor my life is being affected my work is being affected so then you have to tell that okay so as you told me that uh, you know um, your life is being affected i'm just going to talk about how you can manage your lifestyle regarding your sleep as well that's it even you do not tell everything regarding the do's and the don'ts and everything you still be marked because you actually mentioned because the examiner also knows that you know this is a challenging station and they won't be having time nobody will but if you've mentioned because there are smarter candidates out there as well and believe me or not guys it is a competitive exam because there be you're being judged by the others if everyone is actually saying that we're talking about your lifestyle we'll talk about your sleep as well 
and you're not going to talk about that then you won't be marked or you won't be able to pass that station so you have to be very smart with the time that you use in your consultation so even if you say that okay uh, as you mentioned that it's affecting your life i'm going to talk about your sleep as well like how you can manage it that's it they'll give you marks okay and you also there's also one smarter way of giving the summary and covering all the points that i can tell you when ever you want to book your personalized uh, feedback sessions or personalized sessions with with instructors and okay so insomnia do's and don'ts go to bed and wake up at the same time every day relax it is one hour these do's and don'ts you can use in the other stations or in the stations that you have time even in this station if you have got time you can talk about this like go to bed early wake up early relax at least one hour before going to the bed make sure your bedroom is dark and quiet and use curtains blinds an eye mask or you know ear plugs if needed and exercise regularly during the day and make sure your mattress pillows and covers they're comfortable and what are the don'ts do not smoke or drink alcohol so this was also important to ask right smoking alcohol tea coffee smoking alcohol there is no as i said there is no relaxation of not asking smoking alcohol. you have to ask in each and every station of course not for a pediatric patients <laughs> okay so do not smoke or drink alcohol tea or coffee at least 6 hours before going to bed do not eat a big meal late at night do not exercise at least 4 hours before going to the bed do not watch television or use devices like smartphones right before going to the bed because the bright light makes make you more awake do not nap during the day and do not drive when you're feeling sleepy do not sleep in after a bad night sleep and stick to your sleeping or you can maintain a sleep diary as well okay because this case was also long term insomnia case he was not able to sleep for 3 weeks and the only reason was because he was anxious he was worried because of this diagnosis that was the only reason so yeah okay so after that you uh, should mention like warning signs follow ups and offer leaflets okay there's one more important thing and one misconception that i actually thought that uh, you know uh, warning signs mentioning about warning signs mentioning about leaflets follow ups everything is very important the first and foremost thing is concern of the patient okay there is no relaxation of not answering the concern of the patient if you have satisfied the patient you have answered all the concerns of the patient you'll be able to pass even if you have not done the safety meeting okay but do not do this mistake that the patient is asking you a question okay and they're asking you a concern and you're like thinking oh my god i will lose mark for safety rating i will lose marks for not mentioning the leaflets and follow ups and uh, let's just jump to that first and you ignore the concern don't ever do that because you'll definitely fail that station if you're not able to answer the concern if you're not able to satisfy the patient even if you're you know you're rushing through the station do not let um the examiner have this impact that you're rushing through the station or trying to cover each and everything no it's not that kind of thing you have to be very smart answering everything in a polite manner don't be slow and lazy in answering things but of course trying to cover everything on the same part as well so yeah not an easy exam anyone wants to say something yeah. happy kita happy okay i thought maybe someone wants to talk okay so let's answer the uh, queries and then move to the next station it was yeah. dr ashok okay i'm going to first answer the queries and then i will move uh, to the other station okay nice uh, you were saying that there's uh, there's one query right she handled it efficiently my mind was blown away with her understanding that's good 
okay oh, did anemia affects on marriage life uh yeah it can affect uh, on a married life as well as i've mentioned that um, it can actually cause a you know a penile discomfort it can actually cause a uh, penile dysfunction as well so it can affect marriage life what do we do if patient is not in senses well the patient will be in senses is not a psychotic patient <laughs> she handled it efficiently okay but i think she should have explained more on the likelihood of transmitting this gene yeah okay perfect let's move to the other session just a second okay scenario 2 uh, can you see this uh, dr saf are you with us yes, Uh, yeah. Your voice is not clear. Uh, uh, hello. Can yeah, you hear yeah. me? Yes. Okay. Now I we can hear you. You can take your time. Read this scenario. Okay. Okay. Uh mm huh. I have the sickle cell scenario. Uh, I have the same scenario. No, 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 no. It's different. Can you see the scenario? Uh, no. Uh, I have the same scenario. Oh, uh, that is Mr. Mr. Daniel Smith, twenty-four years of age. Um. Uh. Can anyone in the back end team please control? I don't know why it's not moving there. Wait. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Now I can. Actually, there are two or three slides. Okay, now I can. Uh, I'm just doing a mock two scenario. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yes, now we can see your slides now. Yeah. Okay. So you're ready? Yes. Okay. So uh, it's a video call consultation. Uh mm huh. -hmm. So you need to turn on your camera. Okay. Perfect. Ma'am. Okay. Hi. Let me just start the timer. Okay. Uh. We're going to start the timer. Mm -hmm. Are we able to see you? Enter the room. Okay, start. Hello. Hello. Uh, am I talking to Miss Anna Smith? Yes, I am uh, Anna. Okay. Uh. Miss Anna, how uh, may I help you today? No, oh, doctor, I'm really worried about my child. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's been waiting. All right. Okay. So, Miss Anna, I am. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Doctor Saad, one of the doctors in in your GP clinic. Okay. So mm -hmm. before before going to move forward, uh, let me ask you, what is the name of your child? Yeah, doctor. He's Jason Smith. All right. Okay. And can you confirm his age for me? Yeah, doctor. He's uh, four years old. He's four years of age. So, can you confirm the uh, last address of your house for me? Yeah, it's X Y Z Hardman Square. Okay. Thank you so much for confirming the details. 
so you booked an appointment and so can you tell me more about why you have booked oh yeah why doctor, you, I'm, why I'm, are you concerned yeah doctor i'm really worried about my child that i don't know mm-hmm. why he started bedwetting mhm okay so mm-hmm. since when it ha- he has done this oh doctor it's been uh, you know a few days now okay and uh, before that it was uh, okay yeah it was okay there was no issues all right okay and any pain while urination no not that i noted At, is there any me, okay and is there any specific time when he do this specific time in the night night or mm. in the morning um no actually in the morning because he's potty trained so he go to the loo by himself mm-hmm. but there's okay. no specific time in the night but he's doing mm-hmm. it for a few days now and okay. that's quite worrying all right okay all right and apart from that uh any recent change in his life like uh, what and like any recently going to started some school yeah he's uh, going to a nursery yeah and since when since when it's uh, been one year now okay all right and uh, how much w- uh, water he drink before going to sleep uh but never me counted like uh, i don't know about that no problem at all and does he take some cola drinks or coffee or caffeine uh, no 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 doctor he's just a child right. i would like get caffeine okay. to my baby okay all right okay uh, right. so because uh, some some time sometimes the child usually takes some coca cola and stuff like that so any tea no no doctor no. okay okay and uh, any fever no any constipation no okay and he told me that he was fine before that at any time he has that same problem before since his no, birth no doctor he never had it um, yeah okay. he never had this problem before okay and how was the birth of your child it was fine no more mm-hmm. okay and is he up to date with the jab uh oh uh, no no actually yes 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 okay. Okay all right and are you happy with the red book? Yeah I'm pretty much happy with the red book yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay and uh, is he eating well these days? Yep. Okay all right and has he been diagnosed with any medical condition in the past? No doctor never. All right and uh, any family history of any medical illness? Oh uh, yeah doctor his father is type 1 diabetic. Mhm all right okay. okay and uh, all right okay and uh, apart from that is he has some allergy no no okay all right okay does he started drinking some more water these days um yeah doctor i have noticed one thing that uh, he's drinking quite often yeah that's a bit more <laughs> i don't know why okay okay and when he when he passed the loo does you feel some fruity smell no 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 okay all right okay that's fine then okay and uh, apart from that anything else that you want to tell um yeah doctor i don't know but, but uh, he seems a bit tired these days probably he's just playing a lot in the school uh, yeah, I mean, that's, right. that's the reason okay all right and uh, how it has impacted you and in general Oh yeah, I'm in mean, uh, not a lot, but I'm just worried. That's why I booked an appointment. Can you please tell me what's going on? All right. So thank you so much. Uh, so th- it can be because of many reasons. So it can be because you have a history of diabetes, like your husband has. So it can be because of diabetes, and sometimes it can be because of some infection in the urine, uh, or sometimes it can be. Uh, a natural process that a patient uh, or the child might be having some you know increased water intake that might be the reasons so i would like you to come to the gp so that we can assess her and examine her properly in order to find the root cause is that okay okay so uh, doctor when should i come to the gp okay so you can come uh, you can book an appointment uh, tomorrow okay so right, okay. that's fine okay 
so if we find uh, because uh, and we will re- uh, we will refer you to the if we find something unusual we will refer you to the uh, specialist okay they might mm-hmm. do some tests like uh, urine dipstick okay and some some tests for diabetes okay but you can do these urine dipstick tests in the gp you i can do but I, to the specialist yeah i i completely agree i can do because the your child was having no problem before that so we need to refer her to the specialist in order to find out what is wrong with him and we need to examine him as well okay 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 and, uh, and uh, more over yes you can do all right so and i will also tell you that you don't need to be worried and and we are here for you mm-hmm. and i will also send you a link from the nhs website you can go through that the next session okay good performance dr sir you were a bit close i will tell you uh, what was uh, you know what was wrong uh, but before that um, we have listeners in the chat uh, anyone wants to add their valuable feedback dr abdullah wants to talk i think please i encourage everyone to participate in this and it will be helpful for dr saad as well uh, participate in this and uh, let us know regarding your valuable feedback anything that uh, you guys think that he should improve hello hello um well done doctor um it was a nice presentation however um at the beginning you i think it's a telephone conversation and there are some questions you have to ask like the address and if it if she was okay to talk and some of that but i think you missed that at the beginning and also um there was a particular time when you were giving your explanation of um what you think it was wrong you were just talking and not um trying to check if she was following you you understand mm-hmm. because you were just saying too much and not trying to recognize if she was following you so that's another thing that i observed But, true true yes so and uh, uh, sorry to interrupt uh, you, you are absolutely okay. right i should yes. i should be more you know vigilant i should be uh, counter checking his uh, uh, that either he yes. understand or not but before uh, to the first point uh, i will uh, i yeah, you I, did I, ask. Yeah. i did not ask about the thing it is the right time or not because the patient called me it was the patient yeah. who booked the appointment it was not me who called patient booked the appointment so that is why i did not ask why uh, uh, is it the right time because patient called me okay yeah. uh, yeah all right when it's just like is, yeah, yeah 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 when the patient is calling you then even if you don't ask this question it's okay but even if you ask this question you won't be negatively judged that's my personal belief that they, you won't be negatively marked even if you ask that question it shows how uh, safe you want to be right so it's okay to ask that question but even if it's like it's not a very must to do but the must question is confirm the address <laughs> that he did <clears throat> but thank you so much dr adiola your feedbacks are really nice it shows how good listening skills you have and she was talking she wanted to talk more dr adiola are you done with the feedback or you are uh, you want to add more well it's okay i'll just leave you to to say the remaining things Okay. thank you thank you so much thank you so much for participating in this and giving us your valuable feedbacks anyone else he kept confusing if the patient was sh- she or he that may indicate poor yeah but yes uh, it can affect but it won't majorly affect your skills because believe me or not uh, they are not actually looking uh for uh, you know your english language skills they're actually looking 
uh, how good you are as a doctor how compassionate you are as a, in as an individual and how passionate you are towards your patient so gra grammar does not really matters but yes he or she these these, these things there are bit important but not to that extent yeah so the ones i've seen people passing their exams with flying colors who do not even know how to talk in english so i know that <laughs> say that does not really matter grammar does not really matter you just you should be able to uh, you know actually try to convey the message in a in an appropriate manner uh, the station should be like interactive okay anyone else to work on listening skills also he seemed a bit anxious which made him confused by talking to the patient yeah we can say that okay so this was uh, anyone who don't uh, who wants to add on the feedback in the chat box as well they can add it is not just about grammar but since this is a genito urinary case don't you think a girl and a boy yeah for sure yes yes without a doubt yes he or she does matter yeah so dr sath please work on that are you listening are you with us and th thank you so much i am really uh, you know uh, it is very helpful that you people are giving me a great feedback so thank you so much everyone who is writing for me who is talking to me and it is uh, you know i am i have no words for you people thanks a lot oh that's so sweet of you to thank you us anyone else i would appreciate more and more please it will be helpful for him cuz he is having exam in few days and you'll get lots of prayers from him his side as well so i would appreciate all of you guys to give your valuable feedback once i'm sure that i'm done with the feedback i'll go with my feedback and then explaining the topic so dr madi are you with us or you've left cuz she also have exams in few days i don't know whether probably she is with us right now or not but she must be really busy with her exam preparations um ma'am dr madi has left she has an exam so she yeah, yeah 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 she has and exam and also we too. have a question in the chat box okay i have a question okay go on please tell me more about my mistakes okay it is really helpful uh, it is uh, uh, you ask him when should i come to the hospital what would be the right answer yes so i was uh, i'm coming to this uh, and the whole management thing in a bit and i will explain it it was actually uh, an immediate referral it was not uh, a referral to the gp clinic so yes uh, the management was bit here and there it's okay but uh, remember dr sath uh, we've discussed this case with a lot of mentors everyone and uh, it's it's an immediate referral i will tell you the reason why okay anyone else who wants to add on the feedback i will wait uh, if anyone is willing they can unmute themselves I will wait for a couple of minutes, and then I will go on with my feedback. Okay. Well, no worries. Okay. So I think we are done with their feedbacks. It were there were valuable, very much valuable for us. So let's just start with my uh, feedback first. Okay. So it was a good consultation. Yes, as like the patient was anxious and. uh um, you did ask all the video call questions uh, that are really important but you can uh, just add on you know uh, but that's totally up to you if you think that you can manage the time in the rest of the uh, station then you can just add on this question can you hear me clearly can you see me clearly okay and then could you please confirm the first line of address for me so is it the right time to talk to you even this you can ask whether the patient is calling you or you are calling the patient you can ask this question is it the right time to talk to you okay 
even uh, okay so two questions they're optional is it the right time to talk to you and can you can i call you back on the same number if this call this connects right but three questions i would say this is a must the reason why i say it's a must because it shows how well oriented you are in your time place person how composed you are as a doctor and believe me they're actually looking for a very composed and pronounced doctor right so uh, they want to see how well oriented you are so it will give a good impression why because i've seen a lot of candidates not even asking a single question and i've i've already uh, talk about this so i'm not going to take a lot of time in explaining the same thing so can uh, can you hear me clearly can you see me clearly right and um, uh, could you please confirm the first line of address for me it will actually show the examiner that okay so now this candidate because you know there will be lots of stations you never know that you're doing a seminar and then you're doing a video call or you're doing you know a teaching station and then you're doing a video call it will show the examiner that okay so he is so much oriented that he knows that he's talking to a patient on a video call and he needs to check whether the patient wants to see them uh, patient is able to see them or hear them so this is an important question to ask okay so can you see me clearly i mean can you see me clearly can you hear me clearly okay so this is something very important to ask okay otherwise in this uh, scenario so you missed your diagnosis it was type 1 diabetes yes you did uh, you were able to actually understand what's going on dr sar are you with us yes i am keenly yeah, listening yeah, yeah, yeah. to you thank yeah. you okay thank you so you were able to understand actually that uh, what was the diagnosis okay but you were not able to understand the uh, seriousness of the diagnosis you did ask in fact uh, you did not ask any specific question so i was not able to answer you regarding that whenever okay in plap 2 always remember whenever there is pair always compare okay so Uh, day and night also comes in pair so whenever there are night symptoms you have to ask about the day symptoms as well he did ask me regarding one thing that uh, okay is uh, do you think he's uh, drinking quite more uh, more than usual and i said yes he's drinking more than usual then the next question should be you know is he having come directly when you have this one clue of diabetes come directly to the diabetic question is okay like you can ask about weight loss you can ask about tiredness okay he did not ask me regarding uh, specifically regarding tiredness but at the end he did ask me is there anything else that you want to tell me okay so it is also an open question and sometimes it encourages the patient to tell what they are hiding sometimes they don't tell you so you have to be bit specific okay so in lab 2 i will always tell you to be specific because if you have not developed a very good rapport with the patient the patient might not open up because they don't like you sometimes it happens in the real exam if that's why it is called a very subjective exam that if they don't like you very much they won't open up and if they if you've not built a very good rapport with them they won't open up okay but if you ask them a specific question they have to open up okay so like uh, he did not ask me a specific but he did ask oh, an open question which can actually open up a patient as well so he asked is there anything else that you can tell me and i did said yes uh, i'm i'm you know i think that he's a bit tired these days so this was a clincher for dka or type 1 diabetes so it is written in the nhs and cks guidelines that the the Uh, patients who are whom you are suspecting that they are um, you know whom you are suspecting with type 1 diabetes regardless of dk you have to immediately refer them to ane they should be seen on the same day not the next day because you don't know maybe they will go into diabetic ketoacidosis and uh, they might die and this was a very tricky scenario it was it's not an easy scenario it's a high yield case and a very tricky case so people get stumbled in the dike so but if you will ask the specific question you will not lose marks so weight loss was the specific question tiredness 
he was having he was actually having a weight loss as well but he didn't ask me so i didn't tell but if he would have okay and there were daytime symptoms as well he didn't ask me regarding the daytime symptoms okay what is the routine in the daytime okay so then i will tell you that okay yes doctor he is going to the loo quite often in the day okay then you will ask regarding okay it could be infection it could be diabetes as well so he did give the differentials but okay so i would say that uh, try first of all try your level best to give a single diagnosis to be able to make a single diagnosis but in the worst case scenario if you are not able to make a single diagnosis then even if you are giving a differentials and your structure and everything is nice they'll be you'll be able to pass but it really depends on the on the performance of the other candidates as well if everyone is struggling in this scenario then you will pass but if everyone is doing the right way and you're the only one who is giving differentials and not doing it the right way then you'll fail so it is a subjective exam that way yeah so fast heart beating he did ask me regarding fruity smell but there was no fruity smell because it was not to that extent yet okay but uh, it is it was a serious scenario so it was there was weight loss there was tiredness there was going to the loo more often and also in the daytime and also there was like increased thirst as well so all the symptoms and signs were positive for type 1 diabetes so it was a clear cut type 1 diabetes also he asked me father history so it, that was also positive for type 1 diabetes so here you should mention that uh, okay so i'm going to immediately refer you not tomorrow believe me if you'll send to the patient to the gp you might lose the station you will immediately refer this patient to the ane and this patient will be seen by the specialist the hormone specialist they will come in the ane and they will see this uh, this patient and they will do the you know all the routine blood investigation including the blood sugar levels and the hba1c everything will be done there and if he is diagnosed with diabetes okay god forbid if he is diagnosed then he will be assigned by the diabetic nurse who will tell the further details how to you know what to do in the future and then you can just finish off the station by addressing the concerns and mentioning the red flags okay at any point of time if you feel that your child is the child breathing rate is fast okay uh, he is becoming short of breath or if your you know experience if your child is experiencing any fruity smelly breath or something like that come back to us okay just call us anyways you're sending this patient to ane but still just for you know your exam purpose you have to uh, mention the warning signs okay and and the uh, end of the session if you have time you can always mention the summary as well exactly so uh, dr saab do you want to add on something Mm, yes, I I am very thankful because uh, it's because I put the life of patient in danger. So it is it is really difficult for me to pass the station because if you are not referring him immediately, it might uh, affect his life. So you are absolutely right, and I should be more uh, careful in that, especially regarding the situation like I've got in this scenario. So I am very thankful uh, because. Uh, I, what i have learned from the lab too i think it is not to treat the disease it is to treat the situation or to situation. manage the situation exactly. so because i was unable to manage the situation because my patient's life was at risk and i was uh, telling him to come to gp rather than asking him to go to the emergency immediately and i if you if you want to help need any help regarding calling the ambulance or anything i will be there for you i should be telling him these things because i was not here to treat the disease i was there to manage the situation manage the situation very well very well you are absolutely doctor, right yeah and one thing uh, good news for you is uh, that you will ace this station you will get 12 out of 12 now this if this station comes in your real exam yeah that's true that's really true yeah. so this is the whole idea of you know i that's why i appreciate all of you to participate more and more because if this station is going to come in your real exam believe me guys you will just ace it 
because it is now very well discussed yeah <laughs> Congra okay so also um, thank you so much for joining us and um, wishing you best of luck for your exam thank you okay thank you so much dr dirai was a wonderful session uh, but we are not ended yet okay so i am just going to explain a bit more regarding uh, what is type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes causes uh, the level of glucose okay in your blood to become too high and it happens when you okay so uh, we actually struggle sometimes we really struggle in uh, how to define right so uh, how to define diabetes as well how to define insulin as well so the best definition of insulin that i use in my exam is that insulin is actually a hormone that brings your sugar down that's it try to be concise as much as you can in your explanation do not over explain or else you'll be in trouble so what is type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes causes the level of glucose sugar in your blood to become too high it happens when your body cannot produce enough of a hormone called insulin which controls blood glucose you need to take insulin every day to keep your blood glucose levels under control so you have symptoms of type 1 diabetes including like feeling very thirsty being more than usual now this patient was also very thirsty he was being more than usual particularly at night he was very tired he is losing weight quite often as well and the other symptoms were not there but even if you get two or three symptoms one or two symptoms you can at least make a diagnosis in your head right so feeling very thirsty being more than usual he was tired as well weight loss was there as well but they will sometimes also distract you by saying the mother will say yes doctor he is losing weight but i think it's because of his school because he's playing quite, quite a lot these days so do not get yourself distracted what the patient is saying to you if they're telling you one thing that is actually making sense just go on with the um, diagnosis and tell them the right management thrush that keeps coming back blurred vision cuts and grazes that are not healing and fruity smelly breath fruity smelly breath they will give you sometimes when they really want you to diagnose dka and manage dka then they will only give you these uh, symptoms otherwise most of them stations they come with shortness of breath or something they won't give you this characteristic feature because anyone can actually diagnose with this feature right so they don't want to make this exam very simple and cake this getting tested for type 1 diabetes so your gp as he said that your gp will do a urine test and might check your blood glucose sugar level if they think you might have diabetes they'll advise you to go to the hospital straight away for an assessment okay so this is for um uh, like the patient who is coming to gp okay but the patient who is on video call you will immediately send that patient to a not to the gp but if you you have received a patient like it's an outpatient opd consultation in gp then you will uh, you know refer that patient to ane and the patient will be seen by the specialist in 24 hours not like in 48 hours so you will stay in the hospital until you get the okay now listen to this again if they think you might have diabetes they'll advise you to go to hospital straight away for an assessment and this this slide has been taken from nice ckes guidelines you will stay in the hospital until you get the blood test results and this is usually the same day okay so the patient should be seen in the same day if you are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes you will be assigned with the diabetic nurse and they will show you the things you need to do to start managing it such as testing your own blood glucose and how to inject insulin and then you can just mention the warning signs and the offer leaflets and you can i can whenever you want to book the individual sessions i can tell you how to end that session beautifully and you will be you'll be able to cover <clears throat> five points in 10 seconds and nobody will be able to deduct your marks if you've said all things in a right way so thank you so much everyone and we're done with this session and back in team
we've done with this session today and thank you so much for dr saad coming and joining us in and he has exam in few days and also dr matia who has exam in few days thank you so much for joining us thank you so much dr durre for a wonderful job and also i want to appreciate dr saad and dr mary for uh, participating in this session yeah that's quite brave of them i believe yeah oh thank you and actually that's quite brave of you guys as well and believe me this anxiety is nothing participating in front of you know candidates is nothing the exam anxiety is much worse than that True if you that. can fight this then you can fight the exam anxiety as well and you will get the recorded this is going live as well so you will get the recorded uh, feedback and the record this session is recorded so it's uh, i mean golden opportunity for you guys to listen to what you were doing in the station so that you can improve yourself in the real exam best of luck both of you may you ace your 